people uh welcome back you'll notice it is a black background today and that means we're thinking about thinking and why do i care about thinking well as a food scientist i need to understand how people learn and so thinking about thinking is really critical i also work with a lot of organizations both um, individuals so students who are graduating who are going out into um, new leadership roles as well as established leaders, and I help encourage them and provide coaching and mentorship. And part of innovation, whether that's food safety management or uh, new product development or uh, systems management, it's all about change and being able to adapt and manage and persuade people to embrace change within organizations. So this is something I care a lot about and why I'm interested in the theory behind it as a scientist. So Aristotle's rhetoric, Aristotle was one of, um, he was a Greek philosopher from about almost 2,500 years ago, and his work today still influences much of uh, European and North American uh, cultural dynamics within organizations. And so as such, it's, it's interesting to see how this is framed. Rhetoric really implies how do you go about persuading people? And change is all about persuasion. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to appreciate the three elements of Aristotle's rhetoric, which includes logos, or facts, ethos, which is credibility, and pathos, which is emotion. We'll overlay the other dimensions, which include kairos, which is timing and situation, and telos, which is purpose. And we'll utilize the core concepts of Aristotle's rhetoric to create persuasion and manage change by good communication. So Aristotle, as I mentioned, was one of... Um, ancient Greeks uh, most influential philosophers and he wrote quite extensively and those works are still available through a uh, one of the most important collections is called the Organon and in that series of writings he um, writes extensively about logic and persuasion and argument and the role of philosophy in that. So I'll start off with a quote here. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And I think that's important because if you want to be good at something, you have to go out and practice with deliberation. And you know, I, I am a big fan of W. Edwards Deming as well. And he often says that you can't go out and be good at something unless you know what you need to know and go about and study it and then turn it into a habit. So Aristotle also shared that same core principle more than 2,000 years ago, and it's still true today. So go out and keep working and learning. As I mentioned before, there's three core principles, and we've got logos, pathos, and ethos. And logos, again, is all about that factual thinking and coming up with good facts, coming up with um, lineup evidence. There is a whole study of logic behind this how do you set up an argument and I'm not going to go into that today but um, then there's also pathos can you go in with an emotional response and create some sort of caring and um, heartstring sort of discussion when it comes to convincing someone to um, to act the other one is ethos and this one this one's um, interesting because it comes from the concept of credibility what are the good works that you have done to prove that you and your um, argument is sound. And so part of this comes from education. Part of it just comes from experience. For new professionals who are just entering the work world, ethos is a difficult one because oftentimes you don't necessarily have all of that experiential credibility where you can walk out and say, look at my resume, look at my all the degrees that I have. Look at all of the projects that I've completed. Look at the reputation I've built up in the industry. Ethos is hard, but it's earned. Logos is where you can line up facts and figures. And this is one where, when, when I work with young food scientists, Logos is the easiest one to sit in because you can pull up all those facts and figures. But there are many times where you do need to go in 
and use an emotional argument. I think of um, when I worked for the inspection agency, it would be uh, quite frequent that you'd have people coming in and yelling and screaming and um, belly aching at you about the different things that you were doing. But there were times where you could walk in there. I, I think one of my favorite lines that I would use in my inspection work, it was very much a pathos argument. And I would say, would you feed that to your kid? And with with just very few words, I was able to immediately evoke an emotional response about someone's behavior. With very little yelling and very little screaming, I was able to hone in on that emotional response. Would you feed that to your child? Would you feed that to your mother? And immediately workers knew exactly what I meant because I was able to hone in. I didn't need to throw a whole pile of facts and figures. No yelling involved. Um, telos. That is where we are thinking about the purpose of an idea. If you're walking out there and trying to propose a new idea, it really has to have some framework. So you could have the most factual arg argument about something. Let's say I wanted to go and argue that it's um, a great idea to... Um, I don't know, eat banana cream pie all day long. And I could line up all the facts about banana cream pie and make emotional arguments. But if the idea is poorly structured, let's say I'm walking into um, Weight Watchers, into a meeting and say, let's eat banana cream pie all the time. I'm in the wrong situation and my ideas and my purpose are completely misaligned. You need to make sure that the idea and purpose that you are trying to argue has really good alignment with the culture and the spacing. Um, jumping to Kairos, Kairos really talks about timing within that argument. If you are, let's say, I don't know, maybe you're in a food company and you've just had a recall and you're busy trying to do root cause analysis and improve quality systems, that is not the right time to walk in and say, let's launch a brand new product. Because you have other things that you need to be worried about at that point in time. And so you could have the most wonderful factual argument and really have created a strong pitch and concept. But if the timing is off, then your argument as well-sounded as it's going to be and as much ethos and logos and pathos you're going to bring to it, it's going to fall flat. So you have to think about these, all these different elements in, in a concerted purpose, working all together to have really strong persuasion. And again, I'm not a philosopher. I just like to think about thinking and think about how better thinking gets better results in my scientific and technological practice. So I think that is it for this slideshow. You know where to find me. You know where to ask good questions. I always love hearing your comments and watch for some more videos about change management and persuasion.